Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So in this lecture, we're going to look at third degree heart block or complete heart block. Okay, and we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide. And if you don't have access, all you have to do is go to this link here. Okay, and from there, enter your email address, click submit. And from there, you'll get an email. You'll get a link to click on and you'll have complete access. Okay, and you'll get to this. And we've got through part one where we looked at general features, atrial abnormalities, enlargement, rhythms, sinus rhythms, uh, atrial rhythms, AV junctional rhythms, ventricular rhythms. And now we're in this part three here where we're looking at AV conduction delays. Okay, and we've gotten through a number of the AV blocks so far, and now we are on third degree. AV block, okay, or complete heart block. So you, what you'll do is click this drop down menu and you'll get to where we are and you can follow along there. And if you are returning, obviously you can go to that link, enter your email address, and you'll be able to bypass that, okay? Now, those that uh, want access to more resources, our books, and separate videos that go to with our course, go to www.ekg.md and you'll be able to have access to the course here okay and the course is in the books and the other videos are all there okay there's over 500 videos that we have in our collection that are separate from the ones that we have here all right so let's get started so third degree av block or complete heart block this is where you have complete absence of av nodal conduction in other words there's no supraventricular impulses conducted to the ventricles and because of that, there's no relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes. And that's why we get something called AV dissociation. Okay. So you may have heard this in which the P waves will pretty much march out on their own and the same with the QRS complexes. So they're almost going at their own rate and not really related to each other. So what's going on in the heart? Well, if we draw our box diagram here, our right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Then we have our sinus node up here near our in our high in the right atrium near our superior vena cava. We have these internodal pathways to our AV node here, the his bundle, a right bundle branch, a left bundle branch that has those two fascicles, the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. Okay. So that's kind of the conduction system. You also have a Bachmann bundle to the left atrium. All right, so what's going on here? Well, these are all AV blocks. So they're actually happening within that AV junctional region, okay? There's blockage for, from conduction from the atria to the ventricles. Now you can have a very big complete block here where nothing is getting through. So the impulse starts from the sinus node or somewhere in the atria and then meets that uh, almost a halt because it can't get through. Okay, or you may have a block down here that does not let anything to get through beyond that. So maybe it gets through the AV node, comes down here, and then hits this almost like a stop sign. It won't go any further. Okay, and as a result, you have separation of the P waves from the atria and the QRS complexes uh, in the ventricles. So the P waves or the atrial uh, impulse will come down, meet a halt or stop, okay, and we'll show that and then repeat itself. So have its own rhythm, okay, thinking that it's getting through, but it's not. And because the ventricles are not getting any signal, they'll start their own impulse, okay? And maybe that starts from somewhere along here, okay, if the block's a little higher, okay, or maybe it starts somewhere in the ventricles and you have maybe a ventricular escape rhythm that takes over. All right, because the ventricles need to conduct and they're using their safety net to kind of keep everything going. All right, and this is what we think of third degree block. This is complete heart block, okay? And this is the end of second degree AV block moments type one and two. So if things progress so far, this is what you can get. All right, so obviously this is quite important. And this is conduction failure above Movitz type one or below Movitz type two AV nodal blocks, okay? So what can cause this? Well, you can have an inferior or anterior MI. It can be idiopathic conduction system fibrosis. So over time, as people get older, the conduction system gets older as well and it starts to fibrose. It can be from Lyme disease, 
Okay, so Lyme disease tends to have an effect on that AV node. So if this AV node continues and patients are not treated for Lyme disease, it can progress to third degree or complete heart block. Okay, and obviously treatment of Lyme disease actually helps and potentially can reverse this cause and as the it starts to heal. Now medications obviously conduct that affect that AV node can cause this. So you have to be cautious. Uh, often not you know significantly this much, but some to be aware of. You have your beta blockers. You have your calcium channel blockers, digoxin, okay, things that are slowing down that AV nodal conduction in amiodarone can do so as well. Now clinically, this is a these patients are really at high risk for hemodynamic compromise. Okay, they're at risk for ventricular tachycardia, standstill, and sudden cardiac death. So they need a pacemaker. Okay. So these patients are important to be aware of, and those these patients uh, typically and almost always need a pacemaker, at least a temporary pacemaker, if things, for instance, in Lyme disease, as things get better. So again, let's just review what's going on here. So we said there's complete block, pretty much, of somewhere in the conduction system, which is not allowing the atrial impulses to pass through to the AV node, okay? to stimulate ventricular activity. So there's complete failure of that, all right? We saw the blocks. And as a result, we said that the P uh, waves will pretty much go at their own rate. And if you look down here, you may be like, well, there are no P waves, okay? Maybe this is an escape rhythm. Well, there are actually, and that's why you have to look at the other leads, okay? Even in uh, lead two, you may be able to see these P waves okay but the best one is v1 all right v1 you can certainly make out the p waves here so notice here's a p wave here's another one okay and notice that these p waves are going at their own rate see that one's buried in the qrs complex and there's another one and here's one here okay so those are all p waves going at their same rate Notice that if I were to erase this, you can see that those PR intervals are not the same, okay? So you may say, oh, this P wave is associated with that, but notice that it's different than these that follow to the point that it really doesn't exist in these ones, okay? So these P waves are not related to the QRS complex. They're pretty much going at their own rate. So you have the sinus node fun firing, okay? So you may have a normal sinus rhythm because you have this rhythm firing, although you're not conducting through. So the P waves are contributing to the normal sinus rhythm, okay? But in fact, you have a separate rhythm coming from the ventricles, and that's this one here. So no, notice these narrow complexes that are going by themselves, okay? Notice they're narrow, so likely not coming from the ventricles, but somewhere maybe from the conduction system, as we mentioned here. And that's what we would call a junctional escape rhythm. So what you have here, is a normal sinus rhythm with complete heart block or AV block, third degree AV block, with a junctional escape rhythm. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going on in this EKG. Then now this stuff here is all artifact. You'll notice that. Okay, that's artifact that's noted in those uh, precordial leads, not in fact ventricular fibrillation. Because notice everything down here is below, above, and below. So that's important to note. All right. So this is hopefully that's making sense. Okay, you have two separate rhythms pretty much. You have a normal sinus rhythm, a junctional escape rhythm, because of this complete heart block. All right. So the, you'll have a constant P to P interval, so those P waves that we notice, and constant R to R intervals. So these intervals tend to be constant, okay? And as we mentioned with the P waves, which are these ones here, if you were to measure out these P to P intervals, they would be constant as well, because it's a separate rhythm, okay? And the atrial and ventricular rhythms are independent of each other. The atrial rate tends to be faster than, than the ventricular rate as the ventricular rate is driven by either a junctional rhythm, as we saw here, a ventricular escape complex, or a ventricular pacemaker. Now, we mentioned a number of associated conditions that are listed here that you can review, uh, but the main things that you need to know is, again, this is complete absence of AV nodal conduction because no supraventricular or ventricle or impulses above the ventricles are conducted to the ventricles. There's pretty much that big halt here that we said that can is just not allowing the impulse to go through. And that's why you have separation of the P waves and the QRS complexes, and they may in fact be different uh, rhythms that are coexisting. 
and that's what we call AV dissociation. This is the endpoint of all AV blocks. Okay, we talked about first degree, secondary, Mobitz 1 and 2. This is the end of it, third degree or complete heart block. Okay, number of different causes. And remember, clinically, these patients are at high risk of hemodynamic compromise, okay, and oftentimes need a permanent pacemaker unless it's a reversible condition. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course. Okay, um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful, and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on. Okay, and then you also get our pocket. EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day